Okay, so today's the day the new engine's gonna go in. I ripped out all the old steering, the rear steering, I mean, put some braided lines on. We're gonna move the cooler to the front over here. Anyways, engine's going in today. So, two hours, me and my buddy and his girlfriend, we've got the engine in. Transmission, now remember me showing you in the other video there about my transmission mount being modified to make it fit. Well, I didn't even use the modified part, I just used the original two bolt holes, so that was really nice, like it didn't even need to be modified. So, uh, we did do a bunch of wiring yesterday, figured out what all these plugs are, and which ones we're going to need, and so now we're just going to continue on. Okay, so today we're going to hook up the power steering. Now we left the original line, but there was a little bracket here for a pin on the other one to fit on. So now we can uh, bolt this straight on because that bracket's not there. Now this is the feed line to the rack. The return line, I actually put this black braided uh, hose on and we're going to move the power steering cooler wire thingy here because the reservoir is here. There's no point in plumbing it back and forth and over here and then back over there. I mean, I'm sure it might cool down a little bit longer, but whatever. It's my car. It's how I'm doing it. <laughs> okay, so as you can see, it's looped in there. I just basically flipped it and reversed it. Brought it the two lines. And they come out here. So I've got my return from my rack. It's going to go in one. And then from here, I haven't decided where I'm going to mount the reservoir. Maybe I was thinking back there. Instead of up here, free up a bit more room because there's lots of waste and space. Maybe up here because I got a nice shiny chrome one. I don't know. Um, but yeah, that's basically how I moved it, and it's just kind of sitting there. I'm just probably going to use a couple zip ties or something, and you know, maybe after make a bracket or something. But for now, it looks pretty good. Okay, so we've cut the line, we've connected it to one side of the cooler. Now we just got to run this line to the return of the reservoir. Oh, and then there will be a feed, obviously, on this from the bottom of the reservoir. Alright, so in doing some checking, uh, I've decided to use the stock uh, R32 power steering reservoir. But uh, this piece on your power steering pump is a totally different size. Um, on this, on the RB25 than the RB20. So luckily those pieces, uh, just two bolts, they come off and swap it. So I've decided to use it because I still have the power steering sensor and all that. Might as well use it. Um, hopefully it keeps the light off the dash. Anyway, so what we're going to do is, uh, I put this on because we were going to use a different one, but obviously I'm going to remove this one off here and we'll put a new line uh, onto the reservoir and we'll uh, put the stock reservoir back in and yeah so okay uh, so that's back installed two 10 mil bolts another 10 mil bolt the sensor just plugs into that and we ran a feed line over and another black line up and to uh, return it back from the cooler and uh, yeah, that's so far that's the front part. Uh, the rear part will be a, a different video because uh, I'll have to get it aligned and all that. Um, but I mean, you guys seen how to do it. You pull the lines, keep pulling, there's steering column at the end. Um, that's the only difference. But that, that I'll show that in the other video. Anyways, we're going to carry on from here and uh, keep going. Oh yeah, so got to add power steering fluid obviously. Fill your lines. Make sure you got no leaks. Now it's not going to really, it will maybe a little but not fully until you start turning the wheels. Uh, it's up on stand so I'm not going to do that now but I'm going to fill it anyways to make sure I got no leaks from there to here and uh, hopefully there's not. Okay so this is under the rear. Here's the rack. <clears throat> see there's a 
There's a bolt on each side, and there will be uh, the rest of the lines, which I have hanging here. Gotta unbolt them, take them out, and there will be leaking. Holy man, my exhaust. Oh my goodness, look at that. It's rounded right off. Time for okay. these um, anyways, you gotta remove these caps after they come off, and then you can get to the to the tie rod end or ball joint or whatever it is. Um, anyways, so uh, to me that looks like a 17 or a 19 mil uh, bolt. So we're gonna take that off, and uh, I think the well, we'll see what the nuts are. And we'll, post them next. Anyways, that's got to all come out. Okay, so that bolt's 12 mil. This bolt's 10. This one's 10. So the lines are just kind of sitting there. Instead of taking them off, I'm going to wait. This isn't a, a 19 mil, this bolt, these two. But you gotta, you got to take a screw out at the ends here. they got these caps. There's a screw. Well, the other one... It, it came out fine, but this one I had to uh, to drill the head of it out. Anyways, then you gotta you gotta bend these tabs down, loosen these nuts, okay, and then uh, use your fork puller to pop this off. Uh, I usually just leave the nut on just at the end, so when I'm hitting it, it doesn't spring out and hit me in the face. And then I'm going to loosen up these bolts once I have the ends disconnected. And then, uh, yeah, we'll go from there. And then you got to push out the, the ball joint or whatever. And uh, they're actually still in good shape. Like, everything turns nice. But, anyways, uh, it's, it's coming out. So, uh, this is a 17 mil nut. After you pull the cotter pin out, like I said, I just leave it on there a bit. And you need to. Uh, one of these tools, and you uh, bang, wedge it in there, and it should pop it off. That's what we're going to try now. All right, so I had to take the tire off. I used that fork this way, and I just gave it one good whack, and it just uh, that popped off. Now, this part is the hard part. My buddy's not in town this weekend. He's got the, he's a mechanic. Uh, you put it on, and it just... For, well, you got to take the C-clip off the back. There's a C-clip that holds it in, and it's got to be pressed out. He's got this tool that will push it out. So hopefully they go out nice and smooth. they got them soaking here and penetrating oil. And, uh, you know, we're going to do the same on the other side. And then uh, pretty much all that's left is remove those two 19 mil bolts and pull the rack off the rear. Okay, so this side is all done. Well, not all done. We still got to pop out the thing, the ball joint or whatever. Anyways, uh, so we're off to remove the two 19 mil bolts uh, to remove the rack. So we're gonna do. Okay, so after you remove the two 19 millimeter bolts, uh, this is this side here is facing the back of the car, and these two lines where what was left of the system. Here's the whole rack. I bet you that's, I don't know, 10, 15 pounds at least. Just that piece. And, uh, anyways, this is what we got. We got these heavy duty suckers. This is, uh, I'll have to look the name up again. But man, they look to be pretty heavy duty. And the brackets. Got the brackets. Uh, I don't know, bag of hardware that comes with it. Anyways, I thought they were a pretty good price. They were like 250 which isn't bad, brand new. So now we're going to start to... Uh, actually, i got to wait for my buddy to bring the tool to press those out. But we could, uh, we can install the brackets. And then when my buddy comes, we'll, uh, we'll press those out and uh, continue. We'll have to push these back in where we uh, push the other ones out. And then bolt everything up, and uh, of course you will need an alignment eventually, unless you're really good at doing this. 
Anyways, we're going to carry on. So, I've literally tried everything. Uh, I've tried drilling through it. I cut it off. Uh, I've tried everything I could think of without removing the hub. And this is my last resort, and it's working. I went and bought a pitman arm puller. Because your problem is all my other pullers were hitting the drive shaft. Well, this one's nice and small. And as you can see, it's already pushing it out. I used a little bit of heat from this, and it's working. You can see I drilled holes trying to collapse it and everything else, and it just wouldn't come out. Anyways, I don't know because my wife picked it up on her way home from work for me, but it's probably like a $20 tool. Uh, Pitman arm. Works great. I'm going to loosen it out, put like a socket in there, and push the rest of the way out. And we'll continue on with the rear hiacus or hiccus delete video. So this is all I used. Pitman puller. This is an old socket I had that something broke off in it. And I used that to push it the rest of the way out. You had to take a grinder and just kind of grind two edges because it's a... It would just overlap, just a smidge. But it pushes it out like nothing. Anyways, so I guess I'm not going to do a video of doing the other side. It's the exact same same procedure, just the other side. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take uh, some grease and just put a, a little layer, you know, inside. And then uh, we're going to lube the bushing and then... Uh, I'm going to use like a C-clamp and like a piece of wood or something soft to, to kind of press it in because it's, it's got a lip on the, it's got a lip on the bushing. So anyways, kind of clean this up a little bit and uh, yeah, so uh, we'll do that. This is, uh, this is the arm, um, here's the bushing, as you can see there's lips. I'm going to push that out to make it easier because it's uh, a little softer. So we're going to lube this up and squeeze it in and then we will uh, lube this in the inside and probably going to have to squeeze that in and then uh, we'll put this arm on and uh, we'll go from So after a little bit of fussing to make sure that the, uh, the lip was out far enough Anyways, it's in. Now all we got to do is uh, bolt up the brackets on the rear end and put the put the arms across. Okay, so these rear brackets, they just uh, they bolt to the original holes. There's a left and a right. Now if you look, this bolt hole goes right through the frame. So I'm guessing uh, you use the longer bolt to. Uh, get a washer and a nut on the other side you know tuck it on that side so it uh, just looks like a nice nut up here and uh, there's the bushing all nicey nicey so uh, we're just gonna bolt the shock back on and then we're gonna connect the bar across and then uh, we're going to repeat everything you just saw on uh, on the other side so uh, yeah things are a little rusty not really rusty just old maybe might do some more work in the suspension that'll be future uh, future endeavors alright so here's what it looks like installed it actually looks Rather nice. Kind of makes everything else look really bad. <laughs> um, anyways, I just kind of got it snug tight. Like I, like I said, you still need to get an alignment once it's done, but that's what it looks like. I already just kind of bolted the other one just to kind of hang in there. Now i got to go over and repeat the, all the steps on the other side. So, uh, yeah, that's how you... Uh, remove all the steering and lines and I hope this helps everybody and uh, you know make sure you torque these pretty tight it's your steering you don't want it to come loose and go all wanky uh, anyways alright yeah. so here's the other side 
it went uh, an awful lot easier than the other side. Uh, I just heated it, slid right out, and uh, bolted the new one in. Now again, remember about the alignment thing. Um, but that's how you remove your rear hiccus, hiccus steering in an Nissan. I'm sure it's the same in other models. Um, just make sure you get all the proper stuff and uh, follow this. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks.